And Ty Gordon is not starting for the Colonels tonight, but we did see him warm up prior to the game. We'll see if he gets out there. There'll be Pierce Spencer, Ryan Maxwell, Latrell Jones, Devontae Carter, Raji Lyons for Nichols, for Lyons, Jalen Hinton, Roscoe Eastman, Keon Cuerjo, Ryan Burkhart, and Gus Okafor. The Colonels have the ball, and they get the ball to Lyons, and with that half hook, he misses that shot. Rebound taken away by Okafor. Yeah, this should be a real, real interesting game. Both teams are one and one. Uh, somebody's trying to get to the winner's circle. Who that somebody will be, the question will be answered in 40 minutes. And these two teams played just two weeks ago in the Southland Conference tip-off championship game, and it was won by Southeastern Louisiana. 77-72 to was the final score in that game. Lions looking to get their second win over the Colonels. There'll be a lot of intrigue, a lot of drama. The stage is set. Only thing is left is the performance. So how about this? Ty Gordon was just, did not start, but they put him in 34 seconds into this game. And so he comes in for Ryan Maxwell, who made just his fourth start of the season. Well, I wasn't sure about him not starting. When I watched him in warm up, he seemed to be moving pretty good. Uh, so we'll see what he brings to the table once the game gets going a little bit. Averages 20 points a game. He has been named the Southland Conference Player of the Week five times. That three-pointer no good as they were trying to beat the shot clock. Pierce Spencer, 25 points versus UNO, and then 20 points versus Northwestern State. What a start to Southland play for the sophomore. Yeah, Pierce can really shoot the three once he gets going and get rhythm. He's a rhythm shooter. But Ty Gordon coming in the game, he'll attract some attention. And uh, Jones hits the jumper in front of Ryan Burkhardt, and we have our first points of the game. Now, Jones is a fine player, too. He's jumping on pogo sticks. Everything that goes up, he's coming off that wood. He's a quick jumper, but also a very good defender. And a really good game against Southeastern, or excuse me, yeah, against Southeastern in the Southland tip-off classic game. He had 23 points and seven rebounds. Pump fake on the drive, the kick out, Okafor, and that's actually Jalen Hinton, who's gonna go to the line and try to complete the three-point play. Hinton is leading the conference in block shots as well as rebounds. Uh, they are pushing him to be the defensive player of the year in the Southland Conference. If he keeps that up, he's gonna have a good shot. So Hinton will go to the line. Try to complete the three-point play, averaging 12 points, eight rebounds. A big addition to this team from Florida Southern University where he averaged 20 points and 10 rebounds, and he gets completes the three-point play. Well, he transferred in as a Division II player, but he's definitely a Division I player. He had not missed a beat. Uh, he's a tough player to match up with, unless you have that post guy who can stay active for 40 minutes he's going to take advantage of it. into the paint that shot was blocked but staying with it and scoring it's Manny Little an ultimate warrior according to coach Austin Clunch averaging seven points and seven rebounds he's got 38 offensive rebounds too so he just added to it right there yeah Little is very active uh, he's a face-up player who can knock down the shots excels in transition Hinton trying to go down low to Okafor, who's double team, makes a nice move. A little short there, and the Colonel's on the run. Here's Ty Gordon. Gordon did not play in the last game, missed the entire Southland Conference tip-off tournament. And there's another shot by Manny Littles, and the young man out of North Alabama. Well, this is a matchup from the tip-off championship game. I saw Feaston won that game. Hinton, tough shot there, can't get it to go. Jones clears the rebound, the Colonel's on the run. Ty Gordon facilitates, and the three is knocked down by Devontae Carter. Good start for Nichols, they lead it nine to three. Yeah, these two teams uh, really know each other. They'll talk to each other on the court a little bit. I don't have a problem with that as long as you produce it. Lions can use a bucket. Okafor with it. Gets it to Hinton. Over to Okafor. And that's good for three. They answered it well. Okafor, a 35% shooter from three-point territory. The Lions, they shoot the three-point ball well. 35% as a team. 
Well, Okafor can step inside and go outside. Spencer on the drive, but it won't go. Rebound cleared by Hinton. On the drive, this is clear, Joe. Joe, he pops and misses that one. Littles Very grabs crafty. another rebound. Claire Jones, a three-level score. Get downhill, capable of knocking down shots. You're going to have to contest every shot it takes. Carter kicks it out. This is a three-pointer by Jones, in and out. Battle for the board. Still battling for it. Claire Joe comes away with it. Hinton. Okafor. Way off. Spencer kicks it up. Here we go. Ty Gordon missed it. That's a concern with that brace on his knee. Can he bend his knee good enough to knock down that three? Burkhardt is an excellent three-point shooter at 41%, and he hits one. And we're all tied up in nine just like that. A 6-0 run here for the Lions. Well, as long as you got guys to make the three, your team is never out the ball game. Spencer on the drive, blows past everybody with the layup. Averaging nine points a game, but the sophomore from Porter, Texas, has really stepped up his game in Southland play. Well, I'm going to tell you about Pierce Spencer plays hard on both ends of the court. He's a good shooter, and you definitely have to contest his shots. Okafor with it around the screen from Burkhart. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Hinton's got seven to work with. Good bounce pass, yeah. good cut to the rim, but it was blocked by Gordon. He got up there. Look at Coach Keeper. Coach Keeper can't believe there was no call over there. And then Spencer drains it right in front of the Southeastern bench. Look at Coach Keeper still on it. Good start for Spencer, picking up right where he's left off through the first two games of Southland play, averaging 22 and a half points a game in conference action. And then, both teams have good young. Offensive foul. Both teams got good young coaches. Oh, good action from Stouffer Gymnasium. You want a little defense? You're going to get that. If you want some shooting, you're going to get that. How about the block getting up there? That was actually Latrell Jones on the block. And then the three by Spencer. Colonels lead it by five. Fourteen and nine is our score. Nichols leading Southeastern Louisiana. Jeff Palermo, along with former head coach Tick Price, these two teams met two weeks ago, where Nichols fell to Southeastern Louisiana, 77 to 72. The Lions got out to a 15 to five lead in that game, and Coach Austin Clonch told us he thought Southeastern brought the energy and the intensity, and his team didn't match it that day. Yeah. Southeastern maximized the moment. They took advantage of an opportunity. Ty Gordon didn't play that game. Uh, I thought Southeastern came out early through the first punch, and then they went and closed the deal. There they are, lifting up the championship trophy. I'm sure Nickel State hadn't forgotten about that moment. No, they haven't. They uh, gave away a trophy there in the inaugural Southland Conference tip-off tournament, and Coach David Kiefer said, hey, it's always great to win a trophy. And so uh, they get that. And obviously would like to win again in Katie come March and get that automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. But you know the thing about that tip-off, it was good to get games. Traveling the call there on Littles. But at the end of the day, whether you won that trophy or not, this is where you get the real trophy. Yeah. You go to the big dance. That's what this, this tournament is, well, this regular season is about. And what's kind of interesting, right, Coach Price, they've already played once. They're going to play two times in conference play. They might meet a fourth time yep. in the Southland Conference postseason tournament. It's like the NBA. I think by then they'll get to know each other quite well. The teams will know each other. Players will know each other. Coaches will know the tendencies. Hinton kicks it out. Burkhart defended. Got to watch out for Kasper Zick. Yep. Kasper Zick on the drive, and he scores. He How about it. that? Yeah, he's a tough player. He, he goes inside out, plays with a lot of poor savage. He did not play in the tip-off classic. He was out. Wide open lane, taking it hard to the rim, not getting it was Gordon, but the offensive rebound and the putback by Littles. 
Yeah, Little was just fine. While everybody else was watching the drive, Little was going right to the front of the drift rim to get a stick back. Claire Joe over to Hinton. Hinton. Nice pass. Cross court pass. They go inside, outside, and then slamming it home is Hinton. Yeah. Very athletic player at six foot six from Boston, Massachusetts. Jalen Hinton. Almost had a triple double in the last game. Eight points, ten rebounds, and seven assists. Yeah, nobody can convince me that he uh, don't belong in Division One level. Good defense there as they block little shot, knocking it out of bounds. Nick Caldwell into the game for Southeastern. This is Carter with it, hinting on him defensively. Fadeaway jumper is good. That was beautiful there by Devonte Carter. Yeah, he's a fine combo guard that can do it all on, on the court. He used multiple counters on all the drives. He doesn't take bad shots, but you got to make sure that you uh, respect his mid-range game. Caldwell got open down low, and he'll try to complete the three-point play. Time for another break. Colonel's up by three. But some bench points here for the Lions. It's Caldwell. Keeps the Southland Conference basketball on ESPN is brought to you by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. For a retailer near you, visit HerculesTires.com. Jeff Palermo and Tick Price on the campus of Nichols State University in Thibodeau, Louisiana. 18 to 15 is the lead. Nichols leading southeastern Louisiana. Nick Caldwell can complete the three-point play. Lions trailing by three. They had won five in a row before losing to UNO on Thursday night, 78 to 72. So they come in with a record of nine and ten. There you take a look at the series history. And again, these two teams met a couple weeks ago. Last year, they played a great overtime contest back on February 13th, but that win by the Lions in Katy, Texas earlier this month, that snapped a five-game winning streak for Nichols in the series, and they'll meet again on February 26th. And have it. Good block by Caldwell. This is Lions who comes up a little short, goes back up with it, and it still won't go down for the big fella. Relentless work on the glass there by the Colonels, and now we finally have a whistle. Yeah, that's a uh, great second and third uh, op opportunities for Nickel State. Those guys are battling. Uh, anytime you get a second shot, you get another possession. That was the reward by getting two free throws at the line. Ryan Maxwell, who got the start in this game, as uh, Ty Gordon is not in the game anymore after coming in for Maxwell after just a few seconds of this contest. Free throw, no good. Expect both of these teams to knock down some three-pointers. Southeastern comes in, leading the Southland Conference, making nine three-pointers a game. Nichols, eight. Foul there on the uh, missed free throw. That's going to be Lions basketball, it looks like. Full court defense for Nichols. They're looking to trap. Press offense is going to be the key. That's where they look over the top. That's a good veteran pass. Okafor, double team, and he'll go to the line to shoot a couple of free throws. Right, that's the way to attack the press. Okafor took it and went right to the rim. Uh, but you've got to make sure you're very, very conservative once you break that press. Go ahead and attack it. There's no need to play in games against that press. Okafor knocks down the free throw. That's nicely done there. He's had a very good run here, averaging 14 points and six rebounds. Had 15 points and 12 rebounds in that tip-off classic game. Double-double in the conference opener against Northwestern State. 13 points and 10 rebounds and scored the last 11 points in that game. Really worked hard in the offseason to get himself in shape. Kick out. Three ball here for White, and he got it. 
That's Jalen White knocking down the three-pointer. 42% three-point shooter. Yeah, well, Jalen can shoot the basketball. That's what they brought him there for. And he's proven that he can shoot it. Here we have another shooter. Spencer, he is not afraid to take it to the rim as he lays it in. Yeah, Spencer can really shoot the ball. So if you're rushing, they do just what he did. They sweep and go right to the rim. Spencer leading all scores right now with seven points. He's doubling the post. And that ball hits the back of the backboard. As Okafor tried to get past the ball out of the trap. And it results in a turnover. Coach Kiefer not happy about that. Yeah, well, Nichols do a good job. Anytime that ball go in the post, which that really wasn't deep in the post, but anytime there's a post touch, they're going to send have two people and send an extra man down and make that post player make a decision how to throw off. Here's your man, Ty Gordon. Has not scored yet in this game. And no. a white, look out. He's white hot to begin this game. Back-to-back -back threes for Jalen out of Pasadena, Texas. Yeah. Jalen is a nice catch and shoot. He caught the ball in the pocket. As soon as he caught it, he was shot ready and he shot it very comfortably. Nice take. And it's going to be an offensive foul going to be called on Kasperzik. He's going to come right back. <laughs> <laughs> with another drive. That's just the way he plays. Uh, scout report. That was on the scout report. Anytime he drives, there's a chance you can get a charge against him. Great job by Ryan Maxwell to be planted there and take the charge. Pierce Spencer, one of the finest guards in the, in the conference. Definitely one of the best shooters. Good pass by Gordon. Off the glass and in for Ryan Maxwell. Nice work there. He's another face-up forward. You got to wall him up any time he catches it in the post. 28 to 17. Good little run here for the Colonels in the corner. And Kasperzik hits a big three, exactly what the Lions needed. And timeout called by SLU. Yeah, he said, well, you took away the charge. Okay, I'll go ahead and take this three-pointer. Three threes here for Southeastern Louisiana that are three of five from beyond the arc. Both teams shooting the ball at a really high percentage right now, Coach. Yeah, well, you expect that, but he had his foot, feet ready to catch and shoot. He swung right into the shot, and that's what you're going to get. If you come up and close out too close to him, he's capable of sweeping going to the rim. You really have to respect him anytime he's on the court. Let's look at the Southland Conference standings after two games. Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Look at that overall record for the Islanders. 15 and 4 UNO off to a nice start in league play. And then they're all bunched in the middle there with Nichols, SLU, McNeese, Houston Baptist, and Northwestern State in Incarnate Word. Should be very competitive as far as who ends up winning yeah. this league. There's no clear court favorite. Uh, all of these teams are capable of winning this championship. This Tough team, shot and knocking it down is Latrell Jones. The Southland Conference is bringing some exciting basketball this year. Certainly are. And how about the shooting in this game? Nichols shooting 59% from the field. SLU 54%. It's a 10-point game. Another three ball. He's, oh, that was a break. Yeah. He's not looked good by him. Of knocking down that shot. Spencer again to the hoop. And the layup is good. Man, he is hard to stop when he decides he's going to the rim. But you know, with Pierce Spencer, people look at his offense, but he's a very good defensive player as well. Get it out of here, says Latrell Jones. Ty Gordon leading the break. He's open again. That's Martin. White in and out. Now the Lions can run. Kasper Zick, he is going to go all the way to the hoop. And he'll go to the line and shoot a couple of free throws. Blocking foul called. Yeah, he was inside the circle. That was a good call. 
And with 7.58 to go before halftime, Nichols trying to defend its home court. They have not lost in this building at all this season, and they lead by a dozen over southeastern Louisiana. Southland Conference basketball on ESPN is brought to you by Ready Nutrition, official sports drink of the Southland Conference, and by UT Orthopedic. Back inside Stouffer Gymnasium and the Nichols Colonels, who are 6-0 inside this building this year. They lead southeastern Louisiana 32-30. On the free throw line, it's Joe Kasperzik. Transfer from Odessa College, averaged 10 points and two assists last year for the Lions and started 24 games as he hits the first free throw. He had COVID right before the Southland tournament, but good offensive player, but really good defensive player as well. As he leads the team in steals with 28, he'll take a breather, and the three-point specialist Ryan Burkhart re-enters for SLU. Lions down by 10. They've got good guard play. Even this Eastman, who runs the point, he gives them a solid point guard. But if you sleep on him, he'll knock down the three as well. But they've got some firepower in the guard spot. Both teams, Nichols as well. Jones, he'll take the corner jump shot. That's no good. Not much happening there for Nichols offensively. Claire Joe got the rebound. Hinton, Okafor. He'll knock that three down if you give him that much room. Lob pass, Hinton, and he scores. That was a strong move by Jalen Hinton. And a timeout, and not the start that Austin Conch wanted to see after that last timeout, so he quickly calls timeout to slow things up. How about Jalen Hinton at six foot six making this play? Yeah, he's so long and rangy, though. Uh, but that was an excellent pass by Okafor. Threw it on the money over the top. The good catch by Hinton who finished the play. Hinton had 23 points as Southeastern Louisiana got a win over Northwestern State to open up league play. Won that game in Hammond, 79-74, but lost in New Orleans to UNO, 78-72 on Thursday. But Hinton's been a very consistent player for him, big addition, one of the more efficient players on offense. He's a guy, another guy that's put a lot of work into the gym. So the Lions, once down by 12, have cut that deficit down to eight. And a, a good call. foul called on Claire Joe, and he tells the official, you know what, you got that one right. This game is officiated by Matthew Martinez, Jason Barth, and the Albert Buffers. All three of those guys have done an excellent job as officials. And they were really happy to see you, Coach, I, I have to say. Yeah, uh, well, they're happy to see me now that I'm not on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I'm over here with you is because of him. <laughs> Terrell got it over to White. Good pass. And never scoring for the first time is Ty Gordon. Well, he's averaging 20 points a game. He's been more of a, faci uh, a, more of a facilitator in this one with three assists, but he gets his first bucket. Yeah, well. Claire Joe's jumper. Oh, off the glass and in, and he's going to go to the line as he was found by Littles. I didn't know the bank was open this late on Saturday. <laughs> that was know. a heck of a shot. How about this? This is beautiful <laughs> from Claire Joe. I wonder, did he call it bank? Wow. Yeah. And then the look of disbelief by Littles, not only that the fact that it went in, but also he gets hit with the foul. And the three-point play is converted. That was much needed by SLU. Down by seven. They need to get some stops here. That shot is short by Carter, and then another whistle foul this time on the Lions. So it'll be Nichols inbounding it. As you look at Hinton, as he got hit with the foul, I believe. Ball knocked out of bounds. Okafor said, hey, it was last off of Littles, but the officials are not buying that one. Yeah, Okafor trying to play the game and officiate at the same time. That's that calls for a lot of talent to, be, to do that. 
Littles from way downtown. The bank is not open for him as that hits rim and glass. <laughs> Eastman. Stopped defensively. Great play by Spencer. Kept him out of the lane. Well, Southeastern is being very patient. Burkhart's open. You can't leave him yeah, open, Coach. That's right. You can might as well count that any time you got an open shot and got that much room to release. Second three-pointer made by Burkhart. Lions have hit four of them. Spencer off the glass, and then a nice bounce off the rim for another bucket for him. He's back at double figures. He leads all scorers in this one with 11. Oh, big-time contact, and it's going to be an offensive foul. Here, Spencer, I told you, he's more to him than just being able to shoot the basketball. Uh, he does a good job defensively. He read the offense really well. Here we are, uh, setting his feet, didn't move his hips, and took his square in the chest. That was an easy call by the officials. Scored 20, 2,100 points at Lake Creek High School in Texas. Played for his father there, so you know he's a smart player. Out of Porter, Texas. Well, my son uh, played for me, but he never was given that uh, compliment. <laughs> Todd Gordon gets to three. He's Sorry, a 40% Ryan. shooter from three-point territory, and Nichols bumps its lead back up to nine. Yeah, something about coaches' sons, though. They understand the game. They watch, they watches it all the time with their father. They, most of them have pretty good uh, basketball IQ. Okafor with 10 on the shot clock, and he drains the three. Yeah, yeah, he's very comfortable. He has expanded his game, though, to the three. Uh, he's a dead-out three-point shooter, but also can score in the paint. Both of these teams blitzing the Nets from three-point territory. Nichols, five of nine. Southeastern is five of eight. And that is Gordon taking a hard foul. And he's going to go to the line and complete a three-point play. That was a nice pass, though. Uh, I think Devontae Carter's got mirrors on in the back of his head, but that was a really nice pass and very nice cut by Ty Gordon. Seems like Gordon getting into a little bit more of a flow of this game. Again, did not start today. After he had that great game against Purdue, he got hurt, missed a tip-off classic, got hurt in practice, came back from the Southland Conference opener, Played in that game against UNO, but then did not play Thursday night against Northwestern State. Missed a free throw there. Yeah. He's not a good free throw shooter. He's 14 of 29. Well, and Burkhart drains another one. Yeah, Coach uh, Ty Gordon shooting about 51 percent from from the free throw line, and he he's definitely capable of shooting much better, higher clip, much better free throw. Spencer, strange on him defensively, and he missed it. Looked like it was going to fall in there. Lions down by five with the Money. ball. Hinton. Oh, he threw it away. Strange had really yet to make his cut. And an unforced turnover there. Gordon will leave the ball game as he exits the contest. They're being very careful with him. He's got seven. He's got a lot of games to play. And uh, Coach Clons is a fine basketball coach. Uh, I think they do a good job of making sure. Turnover only the second one of the day for Nichols. Get it okay. out of here, Spencer did, but the follow-up is good by Okafor. Coach Kiefer over there, he's had his arms up towards the goal ten, but it ended up being a, a bucket. Nichols at one time led by 12. That lead is down to three as both of these teams going at it. Ty Gordon, string music there, but Burkhart, three threes in this game. A game of will. A lot of points in this one. Still got 347 to go in the first half with Nichols leading Southeastern, 41 to 38 campus of Nickel State University in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Jeff Palermo and Tick Price. Lions shooting 62% from the field. They're 6 of 9 from three-point territory. Nichols is shooting 56% from the field. They're 5 of 9 from three-point territory. And here's another long one that's knocked down by Ty Gordon. 
You don't want to get him going. Ty Gordon can be a very dangerous weapon if he start making threes. He's uh, got he, 10, his second three of the game. Yeah. Down low oh, and the slam by hit. That was a good set uh, drawing up in that uh, possession. David Kiefer did a good job of drawing up that half court set that time. Gordon feeling it. Missed it though. Hit and got the rebound. Up ahead to Eastman. Down to, this is Antonio Gordon. Puts it out to Eastman. Here's Hinton. They knocked the ball out of his hand, and it's last off of his turnover there for the Lions. Well, you got two fine young coaches. Both of them got bright futures in the game. Coach Kiefer from Southeastern. Coach Clunt from Nipple State. They both have done a good job with their programs. Both coaches were assistant coaches at these respective schools before yep. getting the head coaching job. Got a lot of respect for both of those guys, and they're good people off the court as well. Ty Gordon looking for his shot. That won't go. And the rebound taken by Antonio Gordon. He's been way up there, and it somehow got the hit. And he gets the offensive putback. That's the first offensive rebound of the game for the Lions, and it comes at a good time. And Hinton now has eight. Yeah, but Eastman threw that ball on the money. I didn't see it going. But uh, that was a good catch uh, by Hinton. A good finish for the second shot. Almost a tomahawk dunk there by Jones. Now the Lions can tie it. Gordon. One dribble off the glass and in, and we're all tied up at 44. That 12-point lead for the Colonels has been erased. Matthew Strange let the charge out. Gordon, late. Oh, I don't, he missed it. Gets it back, and there we go. That was a pass to himself. Do we get an assist for that? <laughs> oh, no. I don't know if that was an alley oop or they get knocked out of his hands, but it worked, whatever it, it was. Well, when you're averaging 20 points a game, sometimes the game just comes easy to you. Yeah, I think that was an alley oop. Maybe, I don't know. Unless he was that creative to go glass there. Yeah, a guy like that, he can make buckets any way he can find an opportunity. Gordon double team. Fights it and gets it up there and scores. Big piece for this Lions team. He's come off the bench. He's been dealing with a knee injury. He's a transfer out of Kansas State, and he's helped tie this game with less than a minute to go before halftime. Yeah, they got him at 6'9". I'm not quite sure if he's that tall, but he certainly is playing. Six Gordon nine. goes right by, but it was hit by hit. Lions looking for the lead. Stop, pop. Money. Yes, sir. Ryan Burkhardt, a big first half for the six foot five senior out of Florida and the Lions have a three point lead. Burkhart has drained four threes. A lot of emotions in this game. Both teams really getting after it. Gordon gets it, 15 on the shot clock. Maxwell fires the three, that's no good. Burkhart the rebound. They can stop here for the last shot. In this game, you gotta be willing to do the uncomfortable. And if you do that, you got a chance to win the game. Eastman to Strange. He'll fire to three. That's no good. And that will end our first half. Good rally by the Lions. Again, they were down by 12 with about eight minutes to go. And Southeastern, boy, did they have some outstanding three-point shooting led by that man, Ryan Burkhart, who hit four threes. The Lions hit seven for the first half, seven of ten, and they lead it by three, 49 to 46 here in Thibodeau. Halftime coming up from the Stouffer Gymnasium. Don't go away on ESPN. Yeah, that is different about his two previous teams. He's got experience now. And they were able to weather the storm, and they begin the second half up by three. This should be a fun second half. Glad he could be with us here on ESPN. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a good game. One thing about this game, though, you can add wins, but you can't subtract losses. <laughs> and a good start for Jalen Hinton. Hits the jumper. 
Raji Lyons did barely played in that first half. He picked up a couple of quick fouls, and he was out there defensively, and now the Lions lead it by five. That's their biggest lead of the ball game. Good skip pass. Good pass. Lyons Raji. knocks it down. Raji Lyons. That was good basketball. Spaced out very well, penetrated the kick. Open foot with a nice three. Yeah, and they just continue to keep draining the three-pointers. It's now a six-point Southeastern lead. And that one's another one knocked down by Latrell Jones. Well, it's going to come down maybe to what team have the last possession. <laughs> That's what it might come down to. I mean, the three-point shooting is just off the charts right yeah. now in this game. And eventually, one team is going to go a little cold. Okafor, that won't go. Nice job by Jones to keep it in bounds. Carter loses it out of bounds. Last off of Southeastern. Spencer will inbound. Gets it to Lyons. Kicks it out to Spencer to run their offense. Carter is going to be defended by Quarjo. Quarjo playing with two fouls. Screen set by Lyons. Tough shot there and going to the free throw line will be Carter. Well, Okafor just, just walled him up. He ran into Okafor, but uh, he fell on that hand. Devontae Carter fell on that hand. Uh, Looks like he's got that wrist heavily taped. Hopefully he'll be okay to finish his half. Nichols 0 for 3 from the free throw line. Southeastern 6 of 7. In that game in the tip-off classic, Nichols only had 8 free throw attempts, and here only 3, so a team that is not getting to the line all that often. Carter, a transfer out of Norfolk State, actually played in the NCAA tournament last year. He averaged 15 points, four, five rebounds, four assists. All MEAC second team, a veteran player, best ball handler on the team for sure. Well, he can play multiple positions. That's what makes him more valuable. He runs the one. He can play the point, or he can play the off guard because he can shoot the basketball. And he sets the tone on the defensive yep. side of the ball with his ball pressure. Gets a couple free throws there. It's a one-point game. A little miscommunication there. Threw it behind Burkhardt and a turnover for the Lions. Yeah, it's 6-3, though. He's got good size. Uh, Carter can really uh, use his size to make it very difficult for the offensive player. David Kiefer's team has now turned it over eight times. Nichols only two turnovers today. It's interesting. They're running uh, Pierce Spencer in this particular set at the one and bring it caught off on the wing. Carter throws it up top to Maxwell. Fake shot there by Jones, looking for somebody. Eight on the clock, Spencer needs a screen or something. You gotta call it this guy. Carter's just gonna have to fire it up there, no good. And the rebound goes right to Maxwell who lays it in. Maxwell gets the garbage bucket there. He's got four. And Nichols back on top. They lead it by one. That is a talk on that ball screen. Our fourth set the chance. Claire Joe throws it away. Up ahead. Look out. Jones for takeoff. And he slams it home. Latrell Jones. The transfer from Portland gives the Colonels a three-point lead, and he's got six. Hinton kicks it out. Burjo thought about it. Down low, this could be tough. Lions, good defense. And the rebound taken away by Maxwell. Carter up ahead, the shot by Jones, and spins out of there. Spencer to rebound. Up with it. And he'll go to the line and shoot a couple of free throws. Nichols starting to show their muscle now on the glass. Yeah. Well, you can understand. 
You can see Pierce Spencer getting in, mixing it up. He's just a tough kid. Both teams are just going to fight to make sure that they can put themselves in a position to win this game. It's a mentality right now. Whatever it takes, it takes. And so if it takes all five guys crashing the boards, then so be it. That's what the is going on right now. Austin Clodge had a lot of great stuff to say about Pierce Spencer. Said he reminded him of Kevin Johnson, who was such a great player yep. for the Colonels, a local kid. Looked like Kevin Johnson played here about 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> he was here forever, it seemed. He had a great career. He certainly did. And Spencer missed that second free throw and over the back call here on Manny Littles, who can't believe the call. Coach Klontz, though, I don't know what he told his team at halftime, but they came out ready to get after it a little bit. And uh, I know Coach Keeper did the same thing. Both teams have been very entertaining. These fans have been really giving uh, a really good treat to serve in South Dakota's basketball. Knocked out of bounds. We'll stay SLU ball, 17 on the clock. Casper Zick into the game. First time in the second half after a seven-point first half. Burkhardt, they want to make sure they defend him, that's for sure. Okafor has it. Tough shot, and it does not go. Good defense by Carter. Carter now has it. Carter looking to break down Okafor. And nearly threw it away, and did throw it away, I believe. Nope, it's going to stay Nichols' ball. Spinning, turning his Littles, muscles his way in for two. That was a good move by Littles. Good footwork, good feel for where the defense was. Nice post move. And for Littles, he has eight. Down low, there's Hinton. Uh-oh, Burkhart was open, but he passed it up. Okafor fakes the shot. There's Burkhart, Money. he won't pass it there. Oh, that looked good coming off his hand. Scramble for the basketball. Taken by Carter. Nice dish. Open is Gordon. No. Spencer, the offensive rebound. Man, timeout now, SLU. That was a good timeout, though, by Coach Keeper. He saw the momentum getting away from it. He tried to break the momentum. Pierce Spencer continues to have a big game. The yeah. sophomore guard gets the offensive rebound and the putback. Colonel's up by eight. These are two of the best three-point shooting teams in the Southland Conference, and they have shown that here today. Look at what these two teams have done. As, uh, the Nichols number is actually seven of 17 for them. And eight of 14 for Southeastern Louisiana. As there you look at Okafor and what he's been able to do, he's hit three of them. Burkhardt finally missed one for Southeastern, but this has been an impressive run for the Colonels. They're on a 14-0 run, and they lead it by eight, 62 to 54. They're shooting the rock from the parking lot today. Yeah, they the are. Iron has been kind. Casper Zick gets it to Claire Joe. Let's see what kind of play Coach Kiefer drew up during the timeout. They want to get the ball to Burkhart, that's for sure. Try to dump it off, out of bounds, last off a hit. Nichols' defense has improved since yeah. what we saw in the first half, and we got to take another break. 62-54, the Colonels up by eight. We'll have more. Southland Conference basketball on ESPN is brought to you by Crystal Clear Imaging. Real print solutions, real big results. And by IOA, Insurance Offices of America. We make the complex simple. Chilly, but a nice day. And Nickel State in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Jeff Palermo and Tick Price as the Colonels are on a 14-0 run. They lead it 62-54. to after trailing by three and a half, here's Spencer dumps it down in the Littles, and he slams it home. Manny Littles comes up big there. 
And it's now a 10-point lead for Nichols. Second time they've had a double-digit lead in this game. Yeah, if I'm Nichols, uh, I'll just continue to stay disciplined. Uh, if I'm Southeastern, there's no need to panic. There's no reason to gamble. Just stay the course and continue to throw inside out oh, to Burkhardt. Look at that. He made it look good. Easy. Burkhardt has been unconscious from the outside as he hits another three, and that's their three-point shooting. I think they're going to live and die with it, and why not? It's been really good for him today, 9 of 15 now. This is Gordon, and he matches it. Jeff, this could make for a good horse game tonight. <laughs> Gordon's got 15 as he's been picking his spots here, playing on that bad knee. Unfortunately, this is not a horse game. Burkhardt, uh-oh, look out. You might need a heat check there as he knocks down another one. He's got 18. He, that was too smooth. Yeah. He almost looked like he was sleepwalking out there. Gordon came around the screen, and it's going to be an illegal screen. Call against Carter. Well, we, you called it at halftime. They keep shooting it like this. He might get 100 points. <laughs> yeah, I thought you said 90. Said, yeah, I thought, well, I, yeah, I think we're on pace for 90 for sure. Now, yeah. Burkhardt's going to get a breather, but what a huge game he has had here. He's got 18. And that's what, when we asked David Kiefer about Ryan Burkhardt, he said, I'm we have not had a three-point shooter like him since he's been in Hammond, a guy that can knock down 40% of his threes. Now, today, I mean, he's, he's absolutely on fire. He's only missed one, and he's got 18. He's hit six threes. Tough pass there. Ball on the ground. Scramble for it. Should have a jump ball, and we do. Possession arrow is going to go in favor of Nichols. Like when both teams get on the floor for a ball though. Uh, that means that they have good intentions to get those 50-50 balls. A team that can come up with those 50-50 ball hustle plays got a chance uh, to win this basketball game. Carter defended to Manny Littles. Here's Spencer. Littles. Carter. Good defense here by SLU. Spencer, baseline, blocked. Hinton got up there and rejected it. Hinton, look out, here's Strange. No good. Oh, tipped out. On the run, it's Carter. Wide open is White. In and out. Casper Zick the rebound. We're going back and forth here, Coach. Strange is everything. open again. Got that one. And it's yeah. a four-point game just like that again because of the Lions' ability to knock down threes. Yeah. He missed this, that first one and came right back and knocked the second one in. That's playing with a lot of confidence. Carter. Who fell down, stays, keeps the dribble going, though. Gordon with it. Got a call off that screen. Gordon. Missed it. Rebound by Hit. Boy, does he battle for the boards. Casper's in. Casper's in. And he'll go to the line and shoot two when we come back. Nichols had a 10 point lead, but the Lions have cut it to four and they'll be on the free throw line when we come back. a look at coach David Keeper. He was hired as the head coach for the Southeastern Louisiana Lions in July of 2019, replacing Jay Lander. They got nine victories this season, and that is already more than what they got in his first two seasons. 8-23 his first season, 8-18 his second season. And then he was part of Lander's staff as well for four seasons. He started out as a student manager. David Keeper doing a really good job here. I've been the watching, coach. Yeah, I've been watching Coach Keeper's growth. 
as, a, as an assistant coach. And sometimes all it takes is someone to give you an opportunity. They gave him that opportunity, and he's taking full advantage of it. Casper Zick hits the free throw as the Lions are back into this one. Nichols hasn't scored in over two minutes. And the Lions have gone on a 7-0 run to get right back in this game as Casper Zick hits both free throws, a 71% free throw shooter. And we got a two-point game with 11.45 to go as Casper Zick has not. Well, he comes off the bench and gives them uh, instant offense. Littles with the right hand. Littles has got 12, three players in double figures for the Colonels, led by Gordon, who's got 15. Here's Casper Zick, uh-oh, the three-point shooting just continues, and he had a little look there for some of the fans yeah. in the front row. Yeah, uh, they've been talking to him all game. I guess that's one way of him saying, you need to shut up, <laughs> take this three with you. <laughs> Spencer, no go. Maxwell, good offensive board. Nichols can reset their offense. They're up by one. Little, they've had trouble block defending him in the post. Goes up and he scores again. Really, they don't have an answer for him. He's now seven of nine from the field. It's got 14. Well, you're putting a, a guard on him. That guard's got to front the post to keep it out of the post. And if he catches, you got to send another person at him. And trap that post to make him give it up. Casper Zick wanted to slam that one home and he got fouled by Maxwell. And he's down on the ground. Hopefully he's okay. I think after he make these free throws, he'll feel just fine. <laughs> a lot of time guys get hit, they lay on the floor just to get a little bit of a break or rest. How about that cut though, right? I yeah. Mean, he beat Spencer badly there. Well, that's just headsy basketball. Oh, yeah. He's a veteran player. He knows. Moving without the ball. Mm -hmm. So Southeastern has done a nice job from the free throw line tonight. Eight of nine. Again, 12 of 19 from three-point land. As he hits the free throw, we got a two-point game with 10.34 to go. The Lions shooting 62% from the field. I mean, I keep waiting for them to miss a few shots, but they just keep hitting them. And Burkhardt's about ready to check back in, and he's been fantastic with six three-pointers on seven attempts. He's got 18 points, so he's back in the game. So all the guys in the white jerseys, they got to figure out who's guarding number 21. I don't know your scout report. It's in. Spencer takes Kaepernick off the dribble, missed it. Lions can retake the lead, look out! And the, that's gonna be goaltending. Goaltending called on Jones, the bucket goes to Eastman, and SLU has the lead back. You can't trap that ball on the glass like that. Eastman really is a little bit apprehensive. He should have went on and took that ball strong. Gordon's going to go to the line and shoot a couple of free throws. Ty Gordon is, he's a half a step slow, but he still is able to get to the rim. He's so strong, but he's crafty with the basketball, and uh, he's very, very tough to defend once he gets downhill. Last season averaged 15 points as he was the Southland Conference Newcomer of the Year. As he makes the, actually, yeah, makes that free throw. This season averaging 20 points. Had 29 points against Purdue earlier this season, but again, got hurt after that. And misses there. Again, he's a 50% free throw shooter. We got a tie ball game, and we got 10 minutes to go in this one. It should be a lot of fun down the stretch. Casper's it to hit. Gordon, ball fake got Lions up. It's been a tough day for Lions. Has not been able to get in the flow of this one because of foul trouble. He just picked up his third foul. Southeastern does a good job with those ball fakes. Gets the defense off balance, get them off in the air. They're able to dribble, get down the hill, penetrate and pitch to the shooters like that. Here's another three, and they make another one. Antonio Gordon. 
he hits it. And he's not a good three-point shooter. He is just six of 30, but hey, everybody else is doing it. Might as well get involved. <laughs> That's right, Jim. <laughs> Let me join the party. <laughs> My goodness. They're now 12 of 19 from three-point line from Land, and then missed shot there. It's a three-point game. Lions have the ball. Their largest lead was six. That was earlier in this half. Eastman with Jones on him and threw it away. Kasper Zick is saying, wait a minute, that was last off of Nichols, but that's not the case. Well, every possession counts at this point. Going down the stretch, can't turn that ball over. Coaches often teach you when you dribble penetrate to the uh, baseline, you, your option wings got to float to the corner for that baseline pass. But that one went out of bounds. Gordon defended by Eastman. Carter. Got it. That was smooth. Yes, it was. He's a nice player. I mean, he, he give you that steady step, gets you off balance, and then pull up with a mid range. That's going to be an offensive foul called on Gordon. Coach Kiefer said a jump stop is legal, but I, I don't think that uh, Jason Bob is going to take it. Spencer down. Yeah. How many charges has Spencer drawn here today? Maybe three? You know something about coaching. Coaches think they can officiate. Fans think that they can coach. This is an inter interesting dynamic. Gordon dribbling around those southeastern defenders. And then a foul is called. I was calling on Burkhardt just as first. Nichols looking to regain the lead here. He's had five lead changes in this one. Littles has been tough. This there, though, good job by Gordon on the rebound, but an offensive rebound by Ty Gordon. Now what do we got? Another whistle. Foul called on Eastman. I wonder did Ty Gordon ever play football in high school? Because he looked like he could be a pretty good running back or fullback. He's really put together well. He's very strong with that basketball. Got good balance. Real tough cover for the defense. From Tunica, Mississippi, played at Horn Lake High School. Northwest Mississippi Community College played at Troy. Nice shot there by Carter. Carter's starting to warm yeah. up a little bit. He's in double digits. He's got 11. Four Colonel players now in double figures. He said some big shots the last two possessions. Really, really good at separation. Lazy pass shot. there by Casper Zick. And it's still going to be SLU ball, and we need a timeout. 7.36 to go in this outstanding Southland Conference matchup. And the Colonels lead it by one. Let's take a look at the Southland Conference scoreboard. Corpus Christi and UNO, the two teams that are 2-0 in league play. And Houston Baptist leading the Islanders 47-43. And UNO has a 10-point lead over Mike McConaughey and the Northwestern State Demons. Also late in the first half, McNeese up big over UIW, 41-23. Nichols, Southeastern McNeese, and HBU 1-1. One one. Very competitive. Nichols, the preseason favorite, received eight first-place votes. Southeastern received one. They're picked to finish third, and UNL picked to finish second. Should be a great race down the stretch. Great job by Spencer to tip it away in a turnover. Ty Gordon throws it. Ah! I don't know if you could draw that up any better in transition. A three-point game. That pass was on the money. You gotta give uh, the Colonels a lot of credit for filling their lanes, getting out rim running. That was a collective force in transition. How do the Lions respond? Kasper Zick, tough shot, and he was fouled. 
Oh boy, we had a good look at that one. Looked like Jones might have had all balls in. Uh, well, we got a good officiate. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'd like to see that one again. We have a timeout here. Austin Clunch getting his team fired up. With seven minutes to go. And a good one from Stouffer Gymnasium. Nichols 11 and eight on the season. Let's look at this again. Oh, man. Tough call. Might have got him with a little bit on the body. Might have been a little bit of body there from Latrell Jones. If it was little, it was very little. <laughs> it's easy for us to say because we got to be, we can look at it. But uh, that was just a love tap. I call a foul an assault. You got a two teams fighting for uh, opportunity to get a championship. Let him play. Casper Zick has been outstanding from the free throw line. Six of six. 71% free throw shooter. And he makes the first one. Lions, when you look at the shooting numbers, you, you say, how are they losing? I mean, they're, they're shooting 63% from the field, 65% from three-point territory, and 10 of 11 from the free throw line. But a stat that you keep bringing up to me is the offensive rebounds for the Colonels, 11 to one, and the second chance points for Nichols, 13 to two to SLU. Yep, and that's, that's that, this is telling stat, second chance opportunity, yeah. 13 to two. And Casper Zick, eight of eight. We got a one point game, we got seven minutes to go. Now some full court defense for the Lions. Carter into the front court. Gordon. Uh-oh. Here comes Spencer. Uh-oh. Did he travel? I thought he jumped the feet and he did. Only the fourth turnover for the Colonels comes at a bad time with them up by one. Okay, let's see how Southeastern will counter in this half court set. Let's see what they run and who they're running for. Casper's in. A couple defenders around him. Pins it on the drive, the kick out. Here's Casper's ex short. Rebound went to Littles. Carter. Good dish, but a great block great by block. Hinton. Yeah. Wow. That was really timely block by Hinton. Hinton's got it now. That was a great For pass. Three. And they make another one. That is Keon Clairjo, a 29% three-point shooter, and he gets into the end. Yeah, he and uh, Ty Gordon has got a little something going. They're guarding each other. They're talking Shot short by Carter. And look at this. Lions up by two and with the ball. 14 made threes today for SLU. It doesn't get much better than this. No, it doesn't. This is like a championship game midseason. Casper's in. Oh, my goodness. They will not miss 15 threes today. Yeah, well, missing is not part of what they came here to do, it seems. And how about the day Casper Zick is now having? He's got 19. And then we got two men down on the floor here, both in pain at the moment. I think they'll shake it off, though. Casper Zick comes off the bench, though. He's, I saw him doing it at the University of New Orleans the other night. He's, he plays with a lot of energy, a lot of effort. And normally when a player plays like that, uh, he can end up having some success. But he's the kind of guy who will fight for every bench of, of every inch when he comes off the bench. Uh, he's coming out now, but he definitely have deserved an opportunity to get some, a rest. So bringing Eastman in is certainly going to be another good uh, substitution for the Lions. Yeah, Eastman a starter. 
didn't play the first part of the season is he's a transfer from Denver, but he's a true point guard for this team. Uh, another thing that David Kiefer really didn't have his first two seasons here at Southeastern, the true point guard and guys that can really hit it from the outside is Spencer now has 20 points, third straight Southland Conference game where he scored 20 or more. A budding superstar in this league as a sophomore. Spencer's got 21. We got a three-point game coming up on the five-minute mark. Both teams have given them impressive performance. And I just hate to see any team lose, but somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose. That's it. In the past. Oh. Missed one. Carter through the lane, and he got it to Gordon, who scores. And it's a one-point game. Looked like a chess match to me. Gordon leading Nichols with 18, two away from his season average. Clear go. Fade away. Knocked it down. Keon Clairjo. As the blistering shooting continues for Southeastern. They're up by three. Lions hasn't had much of an impact here. Backing his man down the half hook and he scores. He heard you say that. He just <laughs> wanted to make sure you know he's still here. <laughs> Nice jump hook by the big fella. Yeah, four points for the five-year player here at Nichols. One-point game. Hinton taking Lions. Burkhart missed it. Lions the rebound. Hinton got a hand on it. Colonels can take the lead again. We've had seven lead changes. Good pass to Gordon. Lays it up. Missed it. How did he miss it? Got it back. Up with her, blocked by Hinton, and here come the Lions. Clear Joe, Burkhart, down to Hinton. And Lions gets called for the foul. As Eastman will go to the line and shoot a couple of free throws, but first we need to take a breather. A one-point game inside Stoker Gymnasium. A lot of bodies hitting the floor today. Great action. We'll be back after this. Basketball on ESPN is brought to you by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. For a retailer near you, visit HerculesTires.com. One point game with 3.12 to go. Jeff Palermo and Tick Price. Roscoe Eastman is at the free throw line. There you take a look at the Big time scorers in this one. Kasper Zick leading the way for Southeastern as Eastman hits the first free throw. And then of course Burkhardt's six three pointers made today. As the Lions have four players in double figures. Jalen hit 13 points, 11 rebounds, and four block shots. That's add five assists to that. Oh man, that is a, a heck of a day's work. Stat sheet. Stuffer, yep. three-point game. Carter loses it. Colonels down by three, have not lost in this gymnasium this season. Carter, out to Gordon. Gordon, got close to the rim, but came up short. Rebound by Burkhardt. Gordon's missed a couple of close ones here. Yeah, yeah. I think the gym's gotten a little bit quieter, too, these last two minutes and a half to go. Big possession here for Clear Joe and the Lions. Hit. Taking Lions, now picks up his trouble. Uh-oh, uh -oh, Burkhart eyes another one and knocks it down. That's seven three-pointers for Burkhart. That guy's a pure shooter, dead-eye shooter. You can't leave him open. Oh, what a stuffer by Devontae Carter. Devontae Carter, what can you say? He, he's got to be one of the best guards in our conference. Now, that guy goes to the rim and do a lot of things on offense. Man, very talented, smooth with his game. 13 for Carter. 
Okafor. Another three. And he knocked it down. Got it. 17 three pointers for Southeastern. Well, you predicted it. That's none of three points. Lions kicks it out. Uh oh. Carter thought about it. Jones travels, and that's a huge turnover. Only the fifth turnover for the Colonels, but it comes with 129 to go, and Nichols down by seven. 17 three pointers for the Lions. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's just uh, everybody, when you raise up to shoot, it's almost like it's going in. I don't know if it's shooter's rim. And Burkhart, he got hot in the first half, and he hasn't cooled down in the second half. Yeah, he's got a rhythm going right now. He's got shooting it with a shot every time. Nothing but net. He had six three-pointers in the meeting two weeks ago against Nichols, and he gets here today. He's got seven more, so 13 three-pointers against Austin Clonchin's team. Here come the press. You got to be able to execute press offense. Get it off that baseline. That's a good trap area. Down and eight to the front court. Claire Joe. Foul called on the floor. Jeez. Can we do co? <laughs> <laughs> I give it to Burkhardt right now. Just, I mean, he's been a pure shooter, but uh, I mean, man. Well, I'll say. Hinton, Hinton has got a, he's been this stat sheet stuff, right? Well, that, Jeff said. yeah, he, he's been kind of the glue guy yeah, in this game. Give it to him. Because he's got assists, rebounds, he got a double double. But remember when, remember when Nichols led it by 12 in the first half? It was Burkhardt's three pointers that he started knocking down that actually ended up giving Southeastern the lead at halftime. I mean, it's. And now he's hit some big ones here down the stretch as well. What a big time recruit for David Kiefer to get a guy like this. Who, can just be as electric as he can be. 20 points against McNeese, had 20 points against Nichols earlier. The season out 21 today against the Colonels. Another, another block, block shot, that's five for him. That Into might him. give him it. That might be the edge over Burkhart. Yeah. Eastman. Get it out. And he gets fouled by Jalen White. This is a huge road win here for southeastern if they hang on this is big yeah they suffer a tough loss they were up by 14 against uno the other night you were at that yeah game, oh yeah oh yeah and they, they squandered it yeah uno just stayed the course stayed locked in stayed poised uh okafor got in foul trouble going down the stretch that hurt him in the uno game only the second missed free throw of the day for southeastern They'll never have a better, they will not have a better shooting game than they did today. I, you can't duplicate these numbers. 63% okay. from the field, 65% from three-point territory, and 89% from free throw. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Here's a three, uh, Jalen White. He's got three of them. Up ahead to Okafor. He'll That's smart. That's smart. Trying to follow him. And it's the club. Claire Joe's going to go to the line. I think they're going to get to 100, Coach. Well, they keep making free throws. <laughs> the last time yeah. Southeastern has scored 100, you got to go all the way back to 2016 when they put up 128 against Florida A&M. Yeah. In December of 2016, won that game 108 to 69. Better competition here today. Free throw good. And David Kiefer and his team about ready to even up that record 10 and 10. This would only be their second road win. Yeah, you got to give a lot of credit to Southeast to come in here and walk away with a possible win. Because uh, it's not easy to, to win in Stouffer Gym. No, it's, it's not. And place again, like Nichols was six and zero. Oh. The win with only one offensive rebound. Strong player. And Southeastern is certainly about to pull it off. Yeah. 
Let's take a look at our Hercules strong player of the game. Hercules strong play of the game, and that was that big dunk today. Done the job on the glass. They're out rebounding. They Both teams have really played their heart out. They went at each other. Both teams uh, have to be a part of the effort. This place. Yeah, they did. Glass, they're out rebounding SLU. They've only turned it over five times, but the Southeastern Louisiana Lions have just, they shot the lights out in this place. Yeah, they did. Both teams have really played their heart out. They went at each other. Both teams uh, have to be a part of the effort. Spencer with the layup. He's got 18. And I think we have a quick timeout here. Nichols trying to uh, lead through Louisiana now. Spencer's going to get the layup back home, and they got a couple of home games coming up against Corpus Christi on Thursday. So we'll take a look here. Spencer's going to get the layup. Yeah, about a second and a half. And then Coach Kiefer's team, after they host Corpus Christi on Thursday, they get UIW on Saturday in their home arena. Timeout, I believe, Southeastern. Yeah, it's a dangerous place to throw that ball on the sideline and in the corners. Those are trap areas. Home games and they go on the road and get McNeese. These two teams will meet a 24% from three point territory. I talked to Coach Keeper after the game going wrong. Obviously, they've learned from it. Yeah. Gonna play twice in the regular season. They could meet in the postseason tournament. And this, this could be the second of four matchups between these two teams. Would not be surprised if that doesn't happen. Strong possibility. Yeah. But this was a must win uh, for either team. Yeah. Because you want to at least stay close to the top, if not the top. The top two teams get uh, done play in the tournament to the semifinals. So that's why it's important to win at least first, second place so you get those guys. Okafor, the free throw, yeah, the top two teams in the Southland Conference get the, the bye. All the way to the semifinals. Yep. So Okafor hits the two free throws as the outstanding shooting day continues. 100 points for Southeastern. Gordon short. Carter got his stuff blocked again by Hinton. My goodness. And 37 what? blocks on the season coming into the game for Hinton. Shot blocker. I mean, they make, he's making a good case for defensive player of the year. That's for sure. He's got six blocks today. You're talking about a six foot six guy. He's not six nine, six but, ten. But Jeff, look at his arms. He can yeah. scratch his knees standing straight up. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Okafor will go back to the free throw line. And that free throw is good. Jalen Hinton. This is a diamond in the rough. He was the Sunshine State Conference Player of the Year at Florida Southern. He's also the Defensive Player of the Year twice in that league. Reverse layup is good by Devante Carter. It's good. Up ahead to Okafor. Final seconds will eventually come off the clock. And the Southeastern Louisiana Lions come in to Stouffer Gymnasium and get an eight-point win. Wow, good job. 101 to 93, the final score. 17 three-pointers for the Lions to go along with 63% shooting from the floor and 22 of 25 from the free throw line. Can't do it any better than that. No, you can't. That was a heck of a win, though. Uh, South Peaston came in and beat a very good team in Nipple State. Nickel State is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Southeastern, those two are going to see each other again, and it's going to make for a good basketball game one more time. Let's look at our Southland Strong player of the game. It's going to be two of them, Coach. you got to go with Ryan Burkhardt and what he did here today. Seven made three-pointers, 21 points.
He's now scored 41 points against the Colonels in two games this season. Well, and then how about well, more of wow. these sharp shooting from Burkhalter? And then what Jalen Hinton did today, a lunch bucket type of day. I don't know if you can get one without the other. Both of them really played a heck of a ball game. Enjoy the show. Did we get paid for this today? <laughs> we ought to get this money back. Oh, Courtney, don't hear this. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fun one it today was. from Stouffer Gymnasium. Both the <laughs> Southeastern Louisiana women and men both get victories today. Final score again, the Lions beating Nichols 101-93. For Tick Price, I'm Jeff Cordo. Saying so long from Tipro. Next week, Southland Conference men's and women's basketball will have Nichols again at Houston Baptist. All games airing on the ESPN Networks are streamed live and archived on the ESPN app.